Hello again. A while ago, I made a fork of RetroArch to add machine learning support. More specifically, in the first version, I did support to have models override player input. So that means you can potentially play against a smart opponent or have AI play for you, or even have AI versus AI matches. So I'll show you an example and also how to install it. And later, we can have a quick tour of the source code and how to add support for your, your own games. First game I did support for is NHL 94, the one-on-one -on -one rum hack. So when you start a match, uh, the important thing is to set the uh, two-player mode, the head-to-head. -head. So this way the uh, model can override player input. So as you can see, player two is not moving. So what you can do is enter the quick menu and I did the game AI submenu and you can turn override player two to on. So that means the model will override the, the player controller. So uh, it will try to score a goal. And this is uh, me controlling player now. And if you want to have AI versus AI match, you can re-enter the, the menu and turn player override player one to on as well. And now you're gonna see it's uh, uh, the both both players will be overrided by uh, AI. Another game I did support for is Virtual Fighter 32X. So in this example, we can play as uh, Akira and let the AI play for us. So override player one. You can also play against um, the model if you like but you need to select Akira because he was trained on Akira. Now to install that custom version of RetroArch, you can go on my GitHub and find the RetroArch AI fork. I put the link down below. And then you can go in the release section here and download the zip file. Once you unzip the archive, the first thing you need to do is go into the data folder and go into the game you want to play and drag and drop the corresponding ROM. And in this case, it's NHL 94 one on one Next is to install the Visual C++ runtime libraries. So the setup is easy. You just need to accept the, the default. So again, I'll put the link in the description down below. So now we're ready to run RetroArch. So the Sega Genesis Simulator is already downloaded. It's already in the package. So all you need to do is load the content. In data, and for example, in channel 94, you can select the first one. And for the rest, uh, we already showed uh, at the beginning of the video. If you want to use your own models, you can edit the config file in the games folder. So for example, for Virtual Fighter, you can edit config.json. And uh, you simply drag and drop your model in the folder and change the name here. Uh, fortunately, uh, uh, right now it doesn't support multiple models at the same time. So every time you want to swap models, you need to change, uh, you need to edit uh, config.json. Uh, later, I tend to um, to improve that. Another example of NHL 94, uh, where you need two models, and this time you have uh, specific names for the models, and uh, the custom AI requires a scoreboard goal model and defense zone model. So in the code, I reference uh, with those names, so it's important to keep those names. So uh, again, if you want to uh, change these models, you can either over uh, 
override the, uh, these names or just replace uh, the files. So how to train your own models outside the scope of this video. But I'll put the link down below with a tutorial I made a while ago. If you want to add support for a game, you basically have two options for now. So the first option is to use the standard CNN model, uh, also called Nature CNN, which can uh, be found in OpenAI's baseline and also stable baseline. And uh, basically that takes as input uh, for a stack of four frames, uh, which are 84 by 84 and grayscale. And this is a default model used um, when you uh, when you add support for a game. So for example, Virtual Fighter uh, uses that model. So all you need to provide is the ROM and also the config.json in the model. Uh, and you don't need to provide data.json. Uh, which contains uh, RAM values because it takes the, the images. And the second option is a bit more complicated. It's the one of initial 94, uh, which has a custom number of inputs and uh, needs to uh, needs to have access to the, some RAM values and then feed the neural network with uh, values such as uh, velocity, position uh, of the, the players, the puck, uh, etc which are read from, uh, from RAM. And uh, this is what uh, data JSON looks like. So as you can see there, you have the goalie position, uh, the score, um, player position, velocity, etc. number of shots. So where to get that uh, that 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 JSON? So you have, if you're lucky enough, your your game is already supported by Stable Retro. And you can you can find it in the Stable Retro repo. On GitHub, so for example, Sonic. This is the data JSON for Sonic. And um, you can check if the all the values you need are there. If not, if your game is not there or there are some missing values, you're gonna to need to reverse engineer it using the Open, OpenAI's integration tool. Again, I made a, a tutorial about that a while ago. And, um, uh, or if you're lucky, there's also uh, sites like uh, Data Crystal, which has uh, RAM maps for various games. So as you can see, there's many, many games supported. So uh, check that check that out first. Also, for custom models, you need to add support uh, in the plugin. So I'll show you all about that uh, a bit later. So let's store the source code. So basically, there's two parts, two main parts. The first part is the integration into RetroArch, where you uh, manage the plugin and override the, the player input, and also uh, add the, the, the quick menu. And the second part is the plugin itself where you have uh, the actual AI code uh, running and the, the, the inference uh, with the PyTorch models. So let's start with RetroArch. So every modification I made, uh, I put it inside the um, if def. So with a uh, half game AI. And uh, normally you should not touch this part. You should have to touch this part uh, only the, the plugin, but I'll still show you a bit around in case you do. Uh, so an input driver, this is where I actually override the input. So I, there's a Boolean. I use this Boolean and that I set through the, the quick menu. So when earlier in the video, you saw when I turn override to on, uh, you actually uh, set this Boolean value. And uh, it overrides the, the results. Uh, by calling uh, game AI input. And uh, this is the, the file where I manage the plugin and I call the, the plugin functions. So uh, this is where I load the, the actual DLL. And uh, this is where um, it does the, the thinking, it calls the, the, the think function in the plugin. And as you can see, it uh, only calls every four frames. And this is where it overrides the input. So as I said, 
you won't need to touch this normally uh but it's good to know and uh, the rest is mostly like uh just to add a sing simple menu uh the way retro R source code is architectured uh you need to uh, to uh, to modify a bunch of places it's not very convenient but uh, this is how it works and uh, that's pretty much it for RetroArch. Now for the most interesting part uh, is, um, is the actual plugin. Uh, this is in another repo. It's a stable retro script repo. The plugin is in the EF lib folder. So EF stands for emulator frontend. So first let's check the gameai local.cpp and the create gameai function. This is where it decides uh, which code path to use. So for now, there's only two code path, uh, the Inshell 94 or the default game AI. So every other game is gonna use um, the nature CNN model, like I showed earlier. Uh, so normally if you, uh, like in the case of Virtual Fighter, if you have a simple case like that, uh, you won't need to modify the, the, this plugin. If you uh, have a custom solution that uh, requires multiple models or, um, or custom models or you're mixing AI, classic AI with, um, with models, you need to uh, create a custom class like um, for NHL 94. So let's take a look at uh, NHL 94 as an example. So first the, the think function, this is where it does the, the actual thinking. Uh, here again, you, you see flip. Um, why this exists is because uh, when I train the model, I train it as the point of view of player one. And uh, basically, if uh, the, the the you want the AI applied to player two, uh, you need to uh, to inverse the coordinates uh, in order for it to work. So. If you watch my previous videos, you uh, you already know that I, I mix for initial 94, I mix classic AI with uh, machine learning. So, um, for example, I check if it's in the attack zone. If it is, then I will use the score goal model. So score goal, as you might uh, remember, uh, it has to be exactly the same name as in the config JSON. So it's gonna use this model. So it passes at is input um, the, the the data I'm gonna show you uh, in a minute, and the output it's the is the Sega Genesis uh, gamepad buttons. So I I do a bit of extra processing. So the actual shooting is a classic AI is just shoot. Uh, also sometimes running after the puck uh, when it's outside defense zone is a uh, it's very simple. It's just uh, pressing the right uh, direction buttons. And for the defensive models, the same principle. Uh, I take as input uh, some RAM values and then as output, it's the, the gain pad as well. And that's pretty much it. So for the for the thing functions for the, so the other class is the game data. This is where I, uh, I actually read the game data. Uh, I use uh, a nice utility from the OpenAI's uh, retro, original re uh, retro repo, uh, where they, uh, they parse RAM and they, they extract the values. Uh, it's very convenient. Uh, so you don't need to, um, to take uh, care of that. You just need to, uh, to use it. So basically you can use a lookup function with uh, the actual name in your data JSON reference the name in the in the data JSON and it's going to retrieve the value. Uh, in the case of initial 94, I do a, a bit of extra processing, but for your game, maybe you won't have to. Uh, that depends how um, how the game was coded and how the game was uh, storing values. Uh, this is where I flipped the, the data. Another thing to mention is about the, the model itself. So if you want to use a custom model that's not supported by um, the default model or the case of uh, initial 94, similar to initial 94, 
uh, you might need to modify retro model.cpp and add a new forward function. So as we saw earlier in the video, this is where uh, it processed the nature CNN type of model. And this is for NHL 94. And um, this is the, the wrapper around the, the PyTorch models. Lastly, in the readme of the EFLib folder, I did build instructions for both Linux and Windows. If you have any issues, uh, please let me know. So next steps, I plan to add support for more games and model types, and eventually merge the fork in the main Retroarch project, if the maintainers are interested. Also, I plan to continue improving the initial 94 AI, uh, like I mentioned in previous videos. So if you want to contribute to the project, you're more than welcome. And if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions for uh, this project or anything, please feel free to comment down below. So thanks for watching again, and see you later.